Welcome back, um, all friends and devotees of yoga and meditation. Um, I'd like to conclude this morning's uh, lecture, uh, continuing uh, from page 19, to understand Buddhism. These are the uh, investigations of Grandmaster Ching Kong. Grandmaster Ching Kong, for all those who are new, is one of the leading Chinese Buddhist authorities of our time. He lives in Australia, sometimes in Hong Kong, and uh, he has done a lot of research uh, to try to uh, show us a true uh, picture of who the Buddha was, give us a good understanding of who precisely the Buddha was and what precisely the Buddha did how to read our lives completely of suffering, uh, which is the objective of Buddhism. He tries to clarify us, to let us know that Buddhism is not a world religion. Buddhism is an institution. Uh, Buddha is not God of Buddhism. Buddha is a professor. Buddha is a teacher. We have a teacher-student relationship with the Buddha. The Buddha is our supreme teacher. We are students of the Buddha. So this is the relationship. It's a teacher-student relationship, not a God-sinner relationship, God and sinful man relationship, as you have in Christianity or in Islam. Uh, Buddhism is not a religion. Buddhism is a school, just like Confucianism. We don't worship the Buddha. He's not our God. He's not our Savior. The Buddha is a professor. The Buddha is an enlightened teacher, and we are his students. These are the teachings of Grand Master Ching Kong. Uh, if you have been following us, you should have read by now Buddhism as an Education which is uh, the previous lecture series we worked on up till, uh, I think, uh, ending of August. And now we have just commenced uh, to understand Buddhism, another uh, uh, great research that Ma uh, Grand Master Ching Kong spent many years of his life uh, conducting, investigating, and uh, transmitting to us. So if you are with us, I, I have actually attached links, website links to this video, and uh, I would like you to proceed to page 19 so that I can quickly run through them and then you can contemplate on them and let me know what you think. My email address is c.aburime, just in case you have any questions or comments, uh, you can contact me c.aburime at hotmail.com or colorcollege at hotmail.com and I'll start reading from page 19 to understand Buddhism. Uh, you should click on, click on that link and proceed to page 19. In Chinese Mahayana Buddhism, four great bodhisattvas represent our order of practice and level of achievement. The first is Earth Stone Bodhisattva. Whether we are thinking of worldly teachings, the Dharma, or Buddhism, nothing can be accomplished without the Earth or a place of existence. The existence of humans cannot be separated from our great Earth as we rely upon it for survival. Whether clothing, food, living, or working all rely on the production of the land. Thus, the infinite treasures that the great earth encompasses are seemingly endless for us to use. The word earth in the name earth store bodhisattva represents the mind and the word store means treasure. The word store means treasure. The Buddha's teachings guide us to first start the practice from our mind as our true nature encompasses the infinite wisdom and virtuous abilities that are no different from those of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas. However, today it seems as if we have lost our innate wisdom and virtuous abilities. The Buddha told us that all these qualities are not truly lost, just not yet uncovered. In the present moment, we endlessly immerse ourselves in wandering, discriminating, what I call imaginary thoughts and attachments. 
which have resulted in this temporary loss of abilities. However, inside the true mind, no wandering thoughts exist. If a mind has wandering thoughts, then that mind is a false one. We originally possessed this true mind. So practicing Buddhism is simply recovering our true mind. Therefore, our first goal in practice is to uncover and look for the treasure in our mind. In other words, the Buddha's teachings do not seek from the outside, but rather they seek from within, within our self-nature. Earth Star Bodhisattva represents filial piety, thus the Earth Star Sutra is about filial piety, a basic concept that everyone would do well to start from. The kindness that our parents have shown by giving us life and nurturing us is beyond description. To be filial and take care of our parents is naturally our basic responsibility. Not only do we need to take care of uh, their material needs, but of their spiritual life as well. Moreover, we need to nurture their aspirations for us. And for us, this is the hardest of all. Parents wish their children to have successful careers, behave well, and to be respected by current and future generations. In other words, we would do well to act in a manner which will make them proud of us. Therefore, the ultimate and perfect achievement of filial piety is to become Buddha. We begin our practice from here and expand our filial piety and respect to include all sentient beings. The second Bodhisattva, Guan Yin, represents the cultivation of great compassion and kindness. What is the meaning of making offerings to Guan Yin Bodhisattva? It is to remind us that we will do very well to treat all people with great compassion and kindness. To use unconditional love and care to help all sentient beings. I'd like to stop at this point, folks. If you have any uh, questions, any concerns, feel free to contact me through the address I've given to you. Have a pleasant day. Namo Amitofo.